YouTube, what goes on? And welcome to Disavowed Action Figures. The X-Files has returned. I've been on hiatus for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, because it's like 95 freaking degrees back here in my collecting room. It's Pennsylvania. If you're watching from another state and it's like 65 and sunny, I hate you. Because it's sunny and hot as hell here. So, But we're dealing with it. We got fans in the background. But more importantly, we have an amazing guest here tonight. This guy has been killing it on YouTube with different action figure reviews. He's right in my neck of the woods, which is even cooler. Uh, guy's been collecting, just like all of us have for a very long time. Really enjoy his stuff, very entertaining videos and reviews and content. So I'm not gonna beat around the bush. Let's bring him in. Here he is, the one, the only, the yo, Joe Jerk. Brian, what's up, sir? What is up, everybody? How How's we doing? Hey, we're here, we got things up and Can running. I'm so happy to have you on the show this week. Um, I, I'm still waiting again. Like, where you duck, jump up the end of your videos and go back down. I'm just waiting for you to disappear out of camera and pop back up. It's yeah, it's all yeah. Those those are about like worn their welcome. It's it's going to be time for a new one. You can already see that my hair is increasingly <laughs> longer. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, it's I'm sure whatever you're going to settle on, it's going to be great. So uh, I was going to start the show off every week with asking the guest if you could just talk a little bit about X Men the Animated Series. You know what, what it means to you. You know if you watched it as a kid, that kind, that kind of thing. Well, to me, honestly, I watched the show as a kid, but my mother taught me to read from comic books, so I learned about the X Men and everything in a different form. So when the cartoon came out, I was pissed off as a kid because they changed everything, and I was like, wait. I was like, there's so much story between all these things and, you know, it's all different, but I ended up really liking it, you know, for what it was, but yeah. I have always been an avid comic book reader my entire life. That's so, awesome. yeah, but I love how the show condenses everything perfectly though. So it is just an interesting take. So if you've ever read the comics, you're going to get something different out of the show. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, looking back at it now, again, I, I actually, I think I got into reading comics more heavily from watching the cartoon, although I was dabbling with the comics at the time. But it's funny because I think there's almost a fair comparison there in a way to what you said to how the MCU is with their movies. Like they take a comic book title, but then they completely butcher it and do their own thing. Uh, Secret Invasion right now is exactly what they're doing. So, you know, they, they I can't. it. I can't even watch it anymore, man. <laughs> after after Ant-Man, I made it to the dinner table scene, and I was like, nope. I was like, I'm done. I got better things to do with my time than watch Ant-Man get destroyed. So <laughs> I, I'm done with Marvel movies. The comics are better. They're there for you. If, you. if you love Marvel, read the comic books. So before we get into the episode, I'm going to ask, what's your favorite X-Men story arc in the comics? I know it's a hard, hard question, but uh, hard question is definitely right. But I love the Outback stuff with Mark Silvestri and Cliff, uh, Chris Claremont, and around the like two twenty range, right up until Jim Lee takes over. Mm -hmm. There's just some excellent stories, awesome characters, and they just cranked the book out. When I was a kid, it was two times a month, so it was just amazing stuff. So that yeah. that definitely is my favorite arc. That, that's a great one. I, as, as crazy as it might sound, for whatever reason, maybe it's because of the age I was when I read it, I freaking love the Phalanx Covenant. I have no idea why. It might have been this, <laughs> the covers. Whatever it was, yeah. I love the Phalanx Covenant. To this day, I, I always put it at least in my top five, if not my top three. Yeah. Yeah, that's and definitely We got a cartoon good. adaptation of it, too. We got a cartoon version of that one. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that, true. that was very different, right? <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. But it they did it. Different. Oh, my goodness. All right, sir. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's get into it. So this week, we are talking about X-Men the Animated Series, obviously, episode number eight. And we are looking at the Unstoppable Juggernaut. So very excited about this particular episode uh, to talk about it. Um, so before we get into it, let's say hello to everybody who's in the chat right now. Uh, so we do have four feathers. He popped in early and said hello, had to take off. No problem, buddy. Eric's here. What's going on, Eric? Yeah, let He's me bring over. this chat up. We had so many computer problems today. Hey, man, like I said, don't worry about it. I even have my slideshow opened up. I'm so, I'm, I'm, I'm so far behind. There we go. 
All right. So ripping right into it, man. Let's talk about this episode. Um, yeah. We encourage participation. So if you're watching live, you're watching on the playback, feel free to put a comment down in that section. Uh, we're really enjoying just kind of talking about this as collectors. So uh, feel free, everybody, to uh, jump in and say hello later on. So, Brian, as they say in every episode previously, on X on, on X Men. There it is. <laughs> uh, so we had Slave Island last episode, um, and they're getting back from there. And essentially, they see that the mansion is basically destroyed or worked over, right? Oh, I mean, it's destroyed again. Like, how many times does this mansion get destroyed? <laughs> I'd like to know who insures them because I'm sure. Yeah, not not, not State Farm. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? What's the guy's name? Crash. It's on the, 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 the commercials. Oh, um, Mr. Mayhem. Yeah, Mr. Mayhem. All right. So I I, I, I try to include like just interesting little clips and, and screen grabs. I like the Wolverine's back there, like scratching his face with an and claw here. Like, uh, oh, it's great. This Isn't this right after he flambes Scott for not being able to fly the jet yet? <laughs> yeah, he's like, can you handle it yourself without your dad? <laughs> yeah, he's just brutal. It didn't even take like 30 seconds into this episode for Wolverine to rip in the freaking Scott. <laughs> yeah, they're, I, I, I just love that dynamic. And then like, you know, later in the episode or the next episode, they're like family. So I guess that's, that's the point, right? They're Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and how many times do they say teamwork in this episode? Like, I, I was gonna bring that up at the end, dude. Yeah, you're, we're on the same page already, yeah, man. And they, they even like show like the, the the teamwork pictures, like where they're lined up in a row, and they, they go out of their way to hammer that home in this episode for sure. Yeah. Uh, so they get back, they they get off the Blackbird. Uh, they're obviously panicking, looking for Xavier. Jean tries to reach out to him. She's like, he's not here, or he's dead, or he's unconscious. Or whatever. So they're they're working their way through, looking for Xavier, and then we get a message from him. I think, right? Oh, the super Vegas message, like ever. You know what I mean? He's like, "Oh, I'm out of here. See you later. Come and find me. Not leaving directions." <laughs> yeah. Yep. Doesn't say what he's doing now. I I, I wanted to look it up. So I couldn't really remember. I think he's on his way to Muir Island. Is that what I said earlier in the series? Yeah, but he totally doesn't say it to the X Men. He's just like. I'm not here. I'm going somewhere. See you later. Yeah. This is so important that I have to go, but I can't tell you what it is, even though you're supposed to trust me. Exactly. So they take off and then we go back outside. They're still trying to figure out what happened to the mansion. You know, did he get out before this occurred? And they come across these giant boot marks, which um, I know you had a, a very extensive comic book background as a kid. To me watching this, I don't think I knew the juggernaut was yet, to be honest. Well, even to me as a kid <laughs> in some of these shots, because I just rewatched it tonight, like, I don't even think the feet are actually big enough to be Juggernaut's footprints. I don't know. I mean, I have I have the figure here. I can try to, like, put it on the screen. And I... <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. This, this is like, I think if there's like a fire, this is like one of the five Marvel Legends I grab as I run out of the building screaming. Oh, that's so great. If you look at my background over here, you can actually see that he's... I got him on the table with Chuck. <laughs> nice. Yeah, man. That was a, that was a great two pack. I actually bought them separately. I didn't buy the two pack together. <laughs> I think I, I think yeah. eBay both of these like when, right after they came out, so I couldn't find them. But oh yeah, yeah. But, um, that yeah. two pack. I I actually got that from uh, what's his name? Uh, you always go to his shop. Uh, he puts on the toy show. Oh, uh, Kevin's uh, VR Hobbies, Kevin's place. Yeah, I actually bought that from his shop when he restocked it the last time. I just nice. was like, oh, my God, he's got it. I was like, I'm buying it instantly. It's an amazing pack. Um, and again, quick plug to VR Hobbies. They actually have a toy show coming up in September again, Lehigh Valley Toy Comic and Collectible Show. So if anybody's watching, you can Google VR Hobbies and you can see all the information about their upcoming show. Oh, and it's a great show. I always find great stuff there, so... It's just a great mix of stuff for sure. Um, it is. It's a fun show. And 
like even when it's super busy, you can get through the place pretty good. So well, hopefully in September, I get to see you in person at the show. Then. Oh, we will this time. I saw you film and I didn't want to mess with you. I was like, oh, why, why go bother him? You know, so. hey, ne ne never, never a bother, man. Come over and say hello. Um, oh, definitely. Next time. Definitely. Awesome. We'll go. Uh, so here, one of the notes I made on this, Brian, you said you have quite a lot of notes as well, is I, I feel like the, they're, the X-Men are always in the weirdest outfits, the weirdest time. So, like, Storm was in her, like, actual, like, uniform. And now they're going essentially on a mission, and she switches back into her civilian clothing. But yet Rogue and Jubilee are still in their uniforms. And I'm pretty sure Jubilee wasn't in her uniform when they got off the Blackbird and she changed into it. Oh, yeah. They just rotate characters. Because even as we get ahead, Wolverine goes in his costume, out of his costume, in his costume, out of his costume. So, yep. I was just going to bring that up about him as well. Although, you got yeah, I mean, Wolverine yeah, it's there. everybody's rotating. And even later on, Scott disappears. You're like, where the hell's Scott? Where, yeah. where did he go? <laughs> so, <laughs> who's taking notes while they wrote this thing? Um, oh, big time. Yeah, for sure. And um, although connecting into the, the toy world, I think I saw that Mondo for SDCC is doing a <laughs> a one six scale Wolverine in a civilian clothing. Oh yeah, they're they're killing it with those things. They're just cranking them out. Like every time I like go online and look at toy news, I'm like, how many of these things do they sell? They're like, what are they like three fifty like a shot? Yeah, I like they're they're crazy. They're, like, they're even gorgeous. the low end ones. Oh, this, they this are. That's that saber tooth, man. I mean, that's we need that in a Marvel Legends size, is what I want. Yes, totally agree. Like, I don't know why they stopped doing the animated figures just when they were getting everybody out of the way to do people they haven't done before. Yeah, I I don't know, but at any rate, um, so basically, uh, Jubilee, Wolverine, the whole team's going out trying to track down the guy who did this to the house. Um, Jubilee comes across uh, a work site. Sees some uh, workers, hard hats, as she calls them, getting angry. Uh, she walks over and says, what are all the hard hats mad about? And the dude just kind of points and says, look over there. And what I love here, we're obviously getting the tease for, for seeing Colossus. I think we saw him in, in human form walking into the building. I think. Uh, I, I think they only show like a silhouette go into the building, kind of like where you have it freeze framed a little. Okay, like you do see somebody kind of trot in. But then it just, you know. Gotcha. And then we get, we get to see him basically power up. And I love how, like, the, 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 we talked about detail, right? I love how they even have an X over top of the door here with the wood. Oh, yeah, it's great. So they, they're definitely, you know, letting people know, like, yeah, he, we know he's an X-Man from the comics, right? So he goes in. He's essentially working for the, the, the guy on, the, on land there to knock down the entire building. So he's knocking the building down. Jubilee is just standing there. And of course, Wolverine, for the save, runs in, swoops her up, and gets her out of the way. So at least uh, she lives, right? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Is, is this the? Is this? Oh no, 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 no. I'll wait. Uh, so we got our first good look at Colossus here. Uh, all uh, shiny. <laughs> ah, it's the best. He gets one of the best intros out of any X Men, I think. In this, series. he really does. You know, up into this point, he comes out of the smoke, all shiny. It's awesome. He's strutting in. And I had to include this one, Brian. I love how he gets paid and shoves the money down the front of his shirt. Now his wife did. <laughs> I forgot about that. I must have missed that one. I was like, I watched it like twice. I'm like, yeah, he just shoved the money right down. Uh, I just put it down his shirt like a stripper. He's just yeah. like, whoop. Yeah, it's like he's, just, he's out there on stage and just you're right walking out the end of the night, shoves it down there. Uh, so, so essentially all the construction workers are mad because they look at this as a First of all, they're, they're racist scumbags because they're giving them a hard time because he's a mutant. And then on top of that, they're, they're also mad because there's he's essentially taking money out of their pocket in their eyes because they wanted to knock down the building. Um, yeah. So they were pissed about that, I guess. Uh, and then we get this guy, Brian. Tell us about what's oh. happening here. <laughs> oh, man. This guy just wants to end his own life. He, <laughs> he basically thinks that he can drive a car in the Colossus and fails miserably. But he does combat roll out just in time. Yeah, he just accordions this thing. Look at that. Yeah, just done. Just done. If that guy was in there, he would just be juice. <laughs> there would be nothing left of him. <laughs> so he bails out. Colossus is like, and I love Colossus's demeanor. Like this face here. The whole time he's like, 
You crazy he's Americans. Like, yeah. He's like, what have I done? He's like, I, I just stop arming. You know, so. <laughs> he's so confused. And that's an yeah, ongoing thread. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is just great. I, lo- I love how they do that one. So I, I, I got to have you take this one, man. You know oh. this is on purpose. T- explain to the audience, what do we, what, what's with this little uh, hint or illusion right here? Oh, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Fast Fall special, of course. And honestly, I thought it was going to happen in this episode for some reason. I was like, oh, oh, already Fast Fall special, but no. No fastball special. Unfortunately, they did not hit us with it. But yeah, man. Uh, it was still cool. It's it, it's just neat that they lined it up there. Exactly. Eric says, these guys on Hard Hat should be happy. Free labor. They got the job done for free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pac- it Bodo is true. Says, hey, hey, yo. And, Sorry, go ahead. And they have to clean it up. That's right. Um, so we got uh, Pac. Hey, Pac, what's going on, man? It's just, what's up, y'all? This is my favorite X-Men episode, Juggernaut and Colossus. Throwing vehicles. Oh, we you know we're gonna take take a look at that oh, later on. <laughs> it is absolutely one of the best of the first season. It is so much fun. Now, I do I'm not a, a fighter by trade. I'm definitely not a strategist when it comes to the fists, <laughs> but I do want to know why Wolverine thinks it's a sound strategy. Not once, but twice just to land on the guy's shoulders like he's getting a freaking uh piggyback ride. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's just his go-to tactic is just like, I'm going to jump on your head and stab at your neck. <laughs> it did not work out well either time. Um, no. So they're having a skirmish. I wouldn't quite call it a fight. This Colossus is just trying to like basically get out of here. And finally, the nose knows and Wolverine realizes that this isn't the guy that wrecked the mansion, right? Oh, he can smell a lie. He could definitely smell a liar. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to continue their mission. And then I also love, uh, so here, here you mentioned about Wolverine switching outfits, right? Yeah, just randomly. And he's got like just the weirdest looking Jeep I've ever seen in like an animated show. Like, <laughs> the Wolvie Jeep. It's, it's just so odd. It's an odd vehicle. They need to has lab that fucking shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> I I might back that one. I might back that. One. I would definitely if he came uh, Wolvie with the jacket like that. I don't know if they did the 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 cartoon version of him at all yet. They got to get on it. Uh, definitely. So Colossus unfortunately takes the money out of his shirt, goes to a bank. He wants to open a checking account basically, and they automatically blame him for being the person that essentially knocked off the bank. Yep. Wrong place, wrong time, sir. Yep. I think Wolverine says as such. He's a little bit, literally like this guy is always has the worst luck in the world or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Or or to put it nicely, he's a shit magnet. <laughs> <laughs> he really is in this episode. Um Yeah, real bad, the poor guy. Yeah, it's oh god. So then we got Rogue doing rogue things and kind of yeah, she's, a little uh, bit. She was being kind of trampy in this episode a lot. Like it was <laughs> odd, like because if you watch this show. You know, you see it happen. And and it's just hilarious because it goes to this guy and then the Colossus. It's very funny to notice it happens. No, notice Gambit wasn't around at all this episode. That's probably why. She's letting her hair down a little bit. <laughs> so they, they go to the jail, her and Storm, and they're essentially trying to break Colossus out, whatever, get him out of jail. So she uses her powers on this guy who thinks he's going to get a date and a kiss out of it. Uh, they go back. We get this great visual of, of uh, Pete inside the cell. We have the, the two X-Men looking in there. Uh, and I love that Rogue tries the key once. And she's like, oh, wrong key. And just tears the freaking door off. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, exactly. That was great. It was like, why even do that? <laughs> hey, she opened it herself. Um, then we get one of the parts of the episode I, I think is really underrated that I really enjoy a lot. They're, they're talking yes. to Colossus, trying to get him out. And they hear this familiar, friendly voice next door. Who is it? It's the Beast cameo. That's right. And you know what? I did not put that in as a cameo at the end. I should have. So we'll ah. add it at the end. So Beast hanging out in his cell. Um, they offer to like break him out. And just like he said to Magneto, he's like, no, no, I'm good. I just I want to stay here for my day in court or whatever. But he says something hilarious at the end of this scene that I absolutely love. Um, so basically he says, tell Gene, thanks for the cookies. 
And he says, hey, come back sometime. We'll get caught up on gossip. <laughs> I miss that part. I love it. I love the Beast wants to gossip. So uh, it they, is. It's they great. can't get out. There's not a door. So what do they do? <laughs> Make a hole. <laughs> Make a door. Uh, and, and Rogue, again, you mentioned Rogue doing Rogue things. She says something here, too. Like, I love it when he does that or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. She was definitely hitting on him. <laughs> um, you get this guy here, this poor son of a gun, just kind of looking through the bars at everything going on around him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I was weird. thinking about how much, like, public destruction and mayhem was done in this actual episode while I was watching. I'm like, oh, yeah, there's, you know, two broken backs right there. You know, yeah. they crushed yeah, they, a couple of buildings, <laughs> cars. Banks, yeah, and throwing tanks around. And, like, and again, like, obviously, we're seeing it through the eyes of, of the X-Men and the mutants. But, like, as a public society... These two it's terrifying. Yeah, these, <laughs> this woman, these two women knocked out like five cops, broke their backs, and sprung another guy out of jail just because they wanted to. Uh, you know what? I'm so happy you got that guy in the corner who is just looking. That's that's the best little part of the slide right there. Cause when they were exiting, I noticed that guy and I was like, hmm, is that a cameo with somebody? <laughs> but no. It was just like some Scooby-Doo villain locked up. <laughs> I think they plan to bring him back for future episodes, but he, I want him too much money probably. Uh, more than likely. <laughs> uh, so Storm uh, basically freezes the, the door closed, if you will, but then we get our juggernaut reveal. And again, I like, just like with Colossus, they don't just show him. They like show him from behind. They show his oh, power. Oh, yeah. They, they show him lumbering up to the door. And uh, just ripping the heck out of this thing. Um, oh, here we go. Here we go. Now, look at the slide on the top corner. I yeah. love how the money's yellow. It yeah, does please. turn green later, but for some reason, the money's yellow there. <laughs> maybe the, the yellow money has the dye packs in it. like in, Yeah, um, maybe. I yeah. figured that'd be blue money, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So apparently Juggernaut wants to go on a shopping spree. Um, now we start to kind of work towards the more action parts of the episode where um, we get our reveal of Juggy and we get this great scene where the cops somehow got a tank there that quick. I don't know. Like, yeah, they must have airlifted it, you know, like shield just dropped it off or something. Yeah. I, I don't think those things are rolling around downtown New York city too often. Yeah, yeah. Where, you know? <laughs> they don't have garages for those things yeah. in the middle of the city. So they, they, they blast juggernaut with the tank. Um, does nothing his, of course, and his bags don't burn up. <laughs> yeah, it's he grabbed the, the 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 ones that aren't flammable, I guess. Now here's what you mentioned about the money. Yep, <laughs> a little weight distribution. He didn't even notice. And what what does what does Wolverine say here? Something like, "Oh, uh, he does. He busts a really good line here." And I I was gonna write it down, and I didn't. It was, it was something like, "My my hand is quicker than his eye." Yeah, exactly. Or or a rich man is only rich for so long or whatever. But one of those, yeah. But here it was yeah. good. Yeah. But uh this is the old Wolverine trick up in the top corner too. Big villains just love grabbing him by his wrists. It just shuts him down. It's like if you take like a house cat and put him on its back, like on your legs, they're just immobilized. They're like, oh <laughs> the, the ultimate Wolverine hack. Yeah, exactly. Just grab him by his wrists or just dodge the, you know, he's going to jump on your back and stab your neck. <laughs> hey, James, a.k.a. Ratface, another guy. Hey, me. buddy. What's up, man? Uh, What's Pac also on? added, here it is, Brian. Pac said, a fool and his money are soon parted. Boom. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. Hey, Jay Shot's in the house. What's going on, Jay Shotter? Should I say Jay's hot, depending on the day? All right. So we're caught up on the comments. All right, so uh, we're working towards definitely some more uh, fighting here. Uh, here we definitely oh, got a pretty crazy display oh, of stories. I love this part. <laughs> this part is the best. Oh, my goodness. Walk, walk us through what happens here, man. Okay, the Juggernaut sees Jubilee on the top of the building, and, and he just decides to tear the fucking building down. So he starts shaking <laughs> it back and forth. 
And then the most absurd thing in the world happens. Jubilee falls four stories and hits a tiny pile of garbage and is completely okay. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you ever watched pro wrestling? It's like when they oh, land. Oh, it's so you know. good. I was just like, was that boy? You know, I rewound it because I was like, okay, if it was like a two-story building, I'd buy it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But I read comics, Jubilee, you know, light powers. Other than that, you're not indestructible. Yeah. No, no adamantium skeleton, no healing factor. No, no, nothing. And she, you know, on a rewatch, check that scene out. Because she, she takes a four-story fall like no one's business. <laughs> God. Well, so she, she, she learned how to brace her own fall. So uh, this is when the rest of the team starts showing up. I love how Rogue just picks up Juggernaut and throws him into a building. Oh, she, yeah. She just picked him up and tossed him like, you know, like a freaking dodgeball. It was nothing. Yep. Just chucked him. Then Colossus comes running over. Um, he has an ax to grind because he realizes that Juggernaut's the one who essentially committed the crime that got him arrested. Um, and now we get, again, probably one of my favorite parts of the episode, we're just throwing cars and tanks back and forth. Oh, here comes that property destruction I was talking about. Nobody, uh, upon his uh, trip to America, nobody's discussed the concept of how it's illegal to throw tanks in New York City with Colossus. Yeah, that too. Or to Russia, I guess Colossus. it's cool. Like, they're just throwing tanks everywhere in Russia, but. That is true. So we got, we got Juggernaut. He, he picks up a bus. He's going to throw the bus at him. Um, then we get the optic beam coming in. So now we have pretty much the entire team there, which is where teamwork comes in handy, right? Exactly. And here comes Cyclops out of nowhere. We didn't even know where he was for like at least a quarter of the episode. And he just shows up. <laughs> just rolls in. And, um, oh, it's great. He's there for motivation and team leadership. So there he is. Uh, so talk about property destruction. How about Storm right here? I will tell you what. Also in this note, this episode, I've noticed storm is the most powerful x-men character in this whole episode like anything crazy going on she's doing it yeah. and she also has that unknown power set where she can just like make her uniform appear on her or maybe burn off her clothes i don't know what we're supposed to think that is to be honest that i couldn't tell you probably in wolverine's jeep there's you know <laughs> just an extra set of everything in there <laughs> Yes, that's that's the jeep's mutant ability so yeah. for the has lab it'll just come with like an array of fucking street clothes <laughs> so storm picks up a building drops it on juggernaut now she knows it's not going to kill him but i also find it ironic that she'll drop a building on somebody when she's claustrophobic herself so yeah yeah, yeah that that's definitely some psycho or uh psychology there <laughs> yeah. so here's our first team looking shot where Julie's like, oh, my God, you killed him. And Storm's like, nothing we know can kill him. <laughs> exactly. And how does she know that? Hmm. How does she know that? She dropped the building on his head. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jean, uh, Jean, for the second time this episode, tries to use her power and fails miserably because we find out that Juggernaut's helmet, of course, is blocking yeah. telepathy, which would make sense because his brother's it's a telepath. Magic. So apparently Juggernaut and Magneto are the only two people smart enough in this universe to get helmets yeah. to block out telepaths. Yep, and that's a big one in the uh, mutant world. You need one of those. All right, so here we get Jubilee uh, hitting Juggernaut. And Cyclops basically said, I got an idea. It's going to take teamwork like you hit on earlier on. So she blasts them, Cyclops blasts them. Uh, everybody's kind of having a function here. Storm comes in and what she makes a mist or something, I think. Yeah, yeah, she brings in some kind of dark smoke to blind him. And then, you know, you got Colossus with the cheap shot. <laughs> Hit him from behind. And oh, then man, he hits him like a freight train from behind. <laughs> you know what? I'm surprised Wolverine didn't go with his standard battle attack of landing with his legs around his neck. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I guess he just had to land on his knees, but there you go. He's attacking <laughs> the brain pan again. So they're trying to get that helmet off. Colossus holds him. Rogue rips it off. Now, in this moment here, I get a little confused because the helmet's off. So, like, really, couldn't Gene have just, like, got him right now? Yeah, but but Gene's somewhere getting something. <laughs> 
For so, what reason? For what reason? I have no idea because Jean's already the second most powerful mutant. I don't know why she would need it. So I, I, I just don't get why Rogue even needed to try to take his powers here. And then she gets all screwed up. Like, we get oh like my a God. rage. And, and that was a very blood curdling scream for a kid's cartoon. When she flies up into the air and lets out all the power, I was like, whoa. I was like, that's pretty blood curdling for a kid's show. Yeah, right? And, and that's that's yeah. just how the show rolled. And like, I also noticed too, like, his powers, like when she pushed them out, went into space, basically. Yeah, yeah. Like it was like almost cosmic level. Yeah, I never, I never quite got that part. So Rogue nah. does her thing. Um, and then what, what does Jean do to the Juggernaut? Yeah, this is where Jean was. For some reason, she needed a cerebral helmet. Like, I, I don't know why she would have needed that, but I guess it looks cool. Yeah, I just, yeah. She, she failed miserably the first two times. She didn't want to have it happen again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, Storms. Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> excuse me. So, basically, we got Jean doing her thing. She's basically making Juggernaut forget who he is. And uh, Colossus with the save here, right? Oh, big time. And, and uh, I'm pretty sure we get more trashy rogue lines here, too. <laughs> She's like, this is my one chance right now. Yep. She's like, I need a date right now, sir. Gambit is not in town. <laughs> so uh, I think Storm helps out here too, because like you see the air, like yeah, yeah. Rope. It definitely you get the effect and uh, the sound effects in the episode definitely sound like she's rushing air down the slower yeah. down. So that's more teamwork. Um, and then we get Colossus. You American girls. <laughs> oh yeah he he has some of the best lines his like him being so naive is so much fun in this television show so i i love it he's it was, it's like, he's like balky movie. you know but <laughs> you know he turns in the metal i didn't expect a balky reference today that's amazing oh come on I, you know me i always just it's got to be obscure you know i love it so, i love it perfect strangers um uh, yeah, so, yeah side note real quick did you ever watch the show on hbo the leftovers uh, I, I did not, and I really do like all the writers, and I like the main actor. I just never got to it. It's so good, but giving my own Perfect Strangers uh, reference, uh, Cousin Larry is actually an actor in that show in a couple episodes. You know what? He's somebody's like father in another show that I was watching, and I was like, I was like, oh, it's She Hulk. He's She Hulk's dad in that. that I Marvel forgot. Show. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. He was in that. yeah, yeah. I remember I saw him somewhere, and then I, I was like, "Oh yeah, that horrible She Hulk." <laughs> he was the best part of She Hulk. That's that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. My my day is complete when we had to talk about Perfect Strangers. Um, Hell yeah! So Cyclops and Wolverine, of course. You know, Wolverine's all like, wow, I guess there is something this teamwork thing, Bob. You know? Oh, yeah, he comes around. See, in the first 30 seconds of the episode, he's a dick to Scott. And then <laughs> towards the end, he's like, hey, you're right. There is something to this. Um, I also think this is like one of the first episodes where Wolverine doesn't storm off completely by himself in the season. <laughs> I think That's every true. episode this season, he just storms off on his own. Yeah, all the time. You're right. You're this so is when he took right. Jubilee with him. <laughs> Take the kid. Um, so we get to the end of the episode, and uh, basically we're just kind of transitioning to the end. And he, uh, Wolverine makes an offer to Colossus to join the team. Um, do you remember what Colossus says in response to oh, that? Oh, just one of the best Easter eggs ever. And they don't say her name, but he's looking for his sister, Ileana. And that is just so cool if you read comics you're like oh but i guess they made a new mutants movie so everybody yeah. knows who she is now and for anybody watching can you just fill them in on who Alanya turns into later on in the comics oh my god i forgot what they call her because I, I just always think of her from you know that era of the x-men that i told you about in the, the worst thing is, is where it's stuck in my head i i teed that up for you and now i forgot what it is <laughs> yeah i forgot i mean i know you know she has the sword in the the link yeah. of the demon realm and she's you know 
God damn it. I, can't think of, I, I can't think of her name now either. I, I, I thought I had it. I, I just gone. Yep. I um, blanked on it. Something claw, something demon woman. I don't know. Demon bear or whatever. Um, yeah. I just, I don't remember. And, and that was like a whole weird comic. Like she was a kid, but they aged her up at one point, I think. They've just done so much shit in Marvel that I just, you know, I honestly don't like new comics, which is horrible because, you know, that's my business. I'm in <laughs> comics. But, like, they're just so bad right now. Like, for the last 10 years, they've just been really bad. <laughs> there's, a few, there's a few gems here and there, but, like, mainly everything Marvel and DC is pumping out. Is yeah, I well, and again, I think that's a byproduct of the movie because the movie writes. Remember, they were trying to yeah. kill kill off the X Men, make the Inhumans yeah. the X Men because of the TV deals and like. Yeah, they just you know they just want to make everything a movie now, and anything they can do in comics to try and make that happen is where they steer it. So you know, and they don't want to pay good writers or artists anymore. So that's also why comics are good. Yep, and that's that's not a good way to build a business where you need writers no. and artists. <laughs> no, because any good writer or artist now just goes to Image Comics and you know <laughs> they make a fortune. You know, yeah, well, and, so. and that and that's the movie tie-in because then they own the rights. You can make a movie and you're rich. Yep, yep. <laughs> you're rich. Look at the guy with Sweet Tooth on Netflix. That's Jeff Lemire, and you know that's only one of like fifteen comic book ideas he sold. Like. That yeah. guy could just never work again. <laughs> Him and like his grandkids and his grandkids' grandkids will never have to do a thing in their life because he wrote a funny book and sold exactly. It. And, so. and 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 then that's that's the change right there. That's a uh, Harrison Ford was asked why he's still acting at eighty in one of the yeah. interviews I watched for Indiana Jones, and his mm -hmm. response was, "My grandkids also want houses." Yeah. <laughs> It's horrible. That's the reason to get a new indie movie. It's like, oh man, you were you were old like 15 years ago, bro. <laughs> like, I just don't know why they would force him or he would want to do it. It's almost like uh, elbow abuse at a certain point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll see it because you know that's when I grew up in. You know, mm -hmm. I love Indiana Jones. I can't help it, and I even like Crystal Skull, which everybody fucking hates that movie, but. <laughs> You know, you minus a couple of things out of it. It's not horrible. Please, can one of the minuses please be the monkey scene where they're they're swinging on the vines? See that that's the worst. That whole jungle scene just looks like a PlayStation Two game. <laughs> you know, like don't get me wrong, it's a bad movie. I just like bad movies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we, we went you back. Know, you got to you got to take your good movies and you got to take your bad movies. My my girlfriend never saw most. Never saw the, all the indie movies like. In, in 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 entirety she's saw bits and pieces yeah so we went back and watched all four of them over the last month and a half leading into seeing the new one so we both nice. were up to snuff on what's going on no nice. um and even she's like wait there's aliens in this one yeah <laughs> and we see i love when people say that but i'm like you know what when you say there's aliens in that there's an arc in the first one that'll melt your fucking face off with ghosts <laughs> flying around it and you can't handle an alien <laughs> and in the second one, there's there's freaking magic. The guy pulls somebody's heart out of his chest. Like if you can't take, yeah, if you can't take that there's an alien in Crystal Skull, then like you don't like Indiana Jones <laughs> or you don't understand Indiana Jones. <laughs> I will say this so, much. I, I I'm all in on aliens, like next to like comic book stuff, my yeah. next most favorite thing to read and, and, and watch and stuff about is UFOs and aliens. I'm obsessed, oh, right? Oh, yeah, me too. I'm me all too. in. So I I, I, lo I love the idea of it. Yeah. You know, if it's true or not, I don't give a shit. The right. idea of conspiracy yes. and that stuff is very fun. But they, they just can't lose. get wrapped up in it, you know? Right. They, they <laughs> lost me, though, a little bit at the end. I, I, for some reason, I didn't mind seeing... It's just like, too much. It's too well, much. They it shouldn't have made it... Gray. It actually makes a real alien at the end. And I'm like... Yeah, I yeah like they the shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Like it should have been like nondescript alien, like a potato ET alien. And then it would have felt like, you know, not so hokey as a gray alien. Right. So, we, got, we got X Files alien, basically. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But like I said, you know, min minus, you know, 10 minutes out of that movie and it's watchable. Yeah. <laughs> and, 
and the, the new one I will say addresses that one in an effective enough manner that it's not jarring. Like they, yeah. And you know what? I'm expecting, you know, most of my friends, despite what the internet has said about the movie, most mm. of them just say it's okay. You yep. know what I mean? It's not great. It's not bad either. And most people say it's better than Crystal Skull. Yep. So that's I'm yeah. interested. I'll that, check it out. What you, what you just said is how I would explain how I felt about it. So that's spot on. Exactly. And if it's like that, then I would actually be interested in checking it out. Now, am I going to give it money? No, I'm not giving Disney any of my money. You know what I mean? They get it from the action figures. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to jab me 30 bucks for a movie ticket. Uh, the, the, and the action figures are slowly going, going on clearance right now. So keep an eye out. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I was at Ollie's. I found the AOA uh, second series wave. They had yeah, I just everybody, saw dude. They had everybody. Now, it's funny you say that because typically I don't double up on content. I don't like to do like a live stream and a toy hunt. I'm going to yeah. put a toy on it tonight after this at some point, probably around like 945, because Ollie's was stacked today. And I want to get that, that news out to the world. <laughs> to, yeah. To everybody. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you see the controller wave there? Yep, that controller. Oh, I gotta get that wave. <laughs> I gotta go back to Ollie's now. Yeah, they, they, nothing, uh, I was, since you're local insider baseball, uh, Tillman had nothing out yet. Everything was a cat of soft. Oh, yeah, that's, I was there last night and they only had the AOA wave. And then I think I saw your video and I was like, shit, they put it all right next to what I was looking at. I almost walked out and missed it. And you'll see my YouTube hunt. Like I, I went through that main. Yeah, it, it was in a bad spot. <laughs> it definitely was in a bad spot. But so everybody needs it. Hit your ollies up. So all right, cameos. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this guy chilling. I threw him in there. Um, but other than that, man, um, who is your favorite character in this episode? Uh, I to me, I love Colossus. So like his introduction. It's just priceless to me for the cartoon. It's a great introduction. It was fun. And then he didn't even join the team. So even if you were a comic book reader, you were like, shit, he didn't join. Mm -hmm. So definitely Colossus for this Colossus, episode. Right? Well, I'll, just just to be contrary then, uh, contrary, I, I'll say Juggernaut just since he's the other big guy in the episode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's going to be one of the two. Yes, yes. Uh, although Jubilee closed second for taking that fall like a champ. That is true. A uh, four-story fall for, you know, a 75-pound white girl. <laughs> How about she your gonna break? She going to break into pieces, bro. <laughs> What's your favorite quote? Uh, you know, I didn't write it down, but basically when Wolverine burns Scott in the first 30 seconds of the episode, I, I always just enjoy when that happens <laughs> i love it i love it that's i feel like you, you could pick a favorite quote by wolverine from almost every episode he gets oh, all yeah. the best lines. yeah he does get all the best lines but i think when doesn't sinister get some good lines later on but yes for this episode wolverine yeah man and i think i'm gonna go there are a lot of good ones um but the one right now that's resonating with the most is when they chuck colossus i think throws the tank at juggernaut and he looks yeah. at him and goes and says, "Thank you." Yeah. Oh, he did. He he had a lot of good jokes in this episode. So yes, yes, yes. And and you know what? I don't think we ever actually. I I never brought this up. I don't know if we said this or not. So the whole reason this whole episode happened was obviously he wrecked the mansion looking for Xavier, and he said he went to steal the money to get his attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the circle is complete. <laughs> How about favorite moments in the episode? I like these all kind of blur together, but uh, I, I mean, we we beat it to death already. But holy shit, when Jubilee just falls off a four story <laughs> building, I was just like, "Oh my god, it's great!" <laughs> that you know what? I'm gonna you you've convinced me. I'm going with you. That's my favorite moment. Oh, well. uh, it was just so it was just so ill timed. You know, <laughs> even for a kids' cartoon, like the guy animating that was like. No fucking way. No, no. <laughs> well, no. and what are they, they? We've learned so many valuable lessons as kids from the X-Men and from this cartoon. What is that teaching kids? Hey, kids, you can fall off a building and live. Yeah, Wolverine will just brush the dust off you. You'll be all right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I just can't. It's too freaking good. Uh, oh, all right, man. So 
Uh, if you could you know, please share your, your socials with everybody who's watching both live and on the playback. And then also what's the next project you're working on? Do you have a new review coming out? Anything like that? Well, I do have an Instagram, but I don't really do shit with it. You just type in Yojo Jerk. You'll find me there. But mainly, it's just YouTube right now. Uh, the plan is to actually start live streaming at least once a week, where we're just going to talk about shit just like we did today. Cool. Maybe we'll just talk about toys or something else. So I'm thinking about lining that up for a weekly thing. Uh, I think I'm going to be working on a uh, top 10 toys so far this year video, which is the most fucking stupid cliche thing ever, but... I'm doing it too, man. I'm with you. <laughs> well, I buy enough shit, and, you know, I, I gotta do some with it. I can't review or show you all the shit I buy. It's just mm -hmm. that pathetically bad. <laughs> so, I definitely, I definitely want to do the top ten so far, so... And those are always fun. I always click on those, and as, as to piggyback on what you just said, it's, a, it's another way that we play with our action figures, right? Oh hell yeah! I, yeah the review, doing the list. I mean, you look at what's in. Uh, Kyle, so much fun. Yeah, uh, Kyle Peterson. I don't know if you ever watched his stuff, but like big wrestling YouTuber. But he does a top ten list like every other day. Like top ten <laughs> Undertaker wrestling figures. Top ten like. No, it, that's 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 great. If it's you know his thing, mm -hmm. you know that's awesome. You Two know. things people love: countdowns and brackets in sports. Yeah, it it, it is true. But I try to do shit in unconventionally. I just I just roll it how I want to roll it. You know what I mean? Like I don't let anything dictate what I'm doing. I just want to do whatever makes me happy in the moment. Because if you look, I did some Marvel Legends recently. Nobody gave a fucking shit about those <laughs> videos, but I had fun just doing it. You know what I mean? That's half the fun is making the short, filming the video. You know, it's just. A hell of a lot of fun you know most of the time it's just to entertain myself so if i can entertain myself and then entertain other people then i'm happy as shit doing it very well put man same thing when i do a review like people watch my channel to see what's in stores yes that's why i don't show myself in my videos because people aren't watching a toy video to see me they want to see what's there <laughs> yeah so, exactly like, like if i don't get like a brand new gi joe from china before everybody else like <laughs> i'm not banging videos past 2000 like it just it's yep. not gonna happen you know what i mean yep. and like you know i'm just trying to build an audience that's okay with me just doing whatever you know what i mean like that's and, what and I'm you're, trying you're doing to a do. lot of great stuff man I, I always say and i know a lot of people agree that your introductions are always hilarious. You know, well, your intros are always great. I, you just, you just come up with that stuff. Do you script it ahead of time? Like, well, what it is, is those are just scenes from movies, dude. And they're just, I, I love film. Like, uh, you know, I am a filmmaker by, you know, what I originally wanted to do. So I, I, you know, and, I honestly, I used to own a video store in Caddy for years. No way. So. Okay. You know, and, uh, you know, I just, I know film really well. So to me, you know, just taking a funny thing from a, a movie and then just putting it with random toys is just fucking hilarious to me. I don't know why I like it so much, but. Well, it's it's definitely creative. Uh, you're doing a great job. You're killing it over there. And thank you. And like we talked about, no problem. Like we talked about in the live stream. Last time I checked, you're only like maybe 50 subs away from a thousand subscribers on YouTube. So anybody I am who's almost this, there. Yes, he's almost there. So anybody who's watching again, uh, please jump over and give Yo Joe Jerk on YouTube uh, a subscribe. Let's get him to a thousand. He's going to do it on his own anyway, like I said the other day, because your videos are awesome. But again, let's get him there quicker if we can. Thank you, everybody. Um, I really appreciate it. And I haven't been watching the chat, so if I missed anybody or any questions, thank you so much. Uh, James just says he loves your style. Um, and he Thanks, also buddy. said, uh, Odin01 said, I love the intros and the theme. Yes, the theme music is so good. Oh, that's from a very, 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 very old Kung Fu movie. And I actually own the rights to that. 
Oh, so that's even better. So you yeah, keep that, that went into the public domain about 10 years ago, and I bought it for like $13. Thirteen dollars. So yes, if you go back and watch some kung fu theater, you're gonna hear that theme in the background, and I am now the official owner of that. That, is, that might be the coolest thing that yeah, I've learned today. That is amazing. Well, I, it's always got to be something that you recognize that it's me. You know what I mean? Like that music is associated with me forever now. So. That's It'll amazing. never go anywhere. I actually have three different versions of it that you've never even heard. Like I have like from the movie, there's like different paste versions of that music, but I'll dig it out when it's ready. That's incredible. <laughs> that is so freaking cool. Well, all right, guys, we're in about 50 minutes, so we're getting ready to get out of here. So everybody, thank you so much for watching tonight. Definitely. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Hop thank over. you for having me. Hey, man. A anytime. Um, I'm hoping at the end of season one, when I eventually get there, to have a bunch of people on at once to do that last episode of the season, the finale. So I'd love yeah. to have you back. Hell yeah. And uh, also, like I said, I'm going to start live streaming. I'd love to have you come over and we'll talk about tours. Yeah. Hey, I'm always good for that. You should let me know anytime, man. Definitely, brother. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Take care. Stay healthy. Oh, one more thing. I will be putting oh. in a toy hunt video tonight. So sometime tonight, everybody, if you're watching, I don't double up often, like I said before, but Ollie's is just insane right now with toys. You're just talking about it already. Toy on tonight. So take care. Stay healthy. We'll be seeing all of you at the pegs. Later, people. Hey, say the thing. Say the thing. And I'll catch you on the next review. Yes.